Welcome to the ArcMonch Geoportal. The aim of the ArcMonch project was to demonstrate how archaeological and paleo-environmental data can be used along with artistic representations of the coast in order to improve our understanding of coastal change. This tutorial aims to provide information on how to use the portal and the data and tools that it contains. When you first go to the Geoportal, you'll see this landing page. This contains background information to the projects, the project, the partners, including links to their websites, the range of data used for the project, the results, and a help and FAQ section. To come back to this screen at any time, just simply refresh your browser. Now, two key documents were created by the project, a guide and a detailed technical report, which includes the case study reports. Links to these are available in this results section, and you'll also see links as you explore the rest of the Geoportal later. So if we close this landing page, what you'll do first of all is you'll see these case study areas on the map, marked by these red squares, and you'll also see the coastal morphology of the region, which is here by these coloured squares. The legend on the left explains what the colours represent. Now you can also select to turn this layer off if you wish, and you can start to explore some of the other data held within this portal. I'll just select the archaeological and paleo-environmental evidence first of all. Now all these dots represent sites and features assessed through the project. The partners developed a ranking system to highlight the potential a site has to inform on long-term coastal change. More information on this is in the technical report, but basically the size and colour of these dots represents the results of the ranking. So the larger red dots show sites with high potential. Now we can use these, uh, these tools on the left hand side to zoom into the case study areas. So I'll just use this one and we'll zoom in to the solar. You can also use your mouse as well to zoom in and out. The red square represents the extent of the case study area. Now you can use your mouse just to hover over that. It brings up this summary box of the case study area with some information. And you can also click on this image which will give you the full case study report which you can save and download. Just close that and go back to the database. OK, now the purple lines here show the extent of the focused archaeological work which was carried out. You can hover or click on each of these sites to find more information. So we'll just zoom into the Langston case study area now. We can use this select tool on the left and you can hover over. A pop-up box will come up with some information about the site. So here's the sign a circle. Click for more information, and in this case it will take you to the English Heritage Passscape website where you can get more information about that site. And you can also click on a dot and information about that site or feature will come up in this selection box on the right hand side. The results of the ranking and the description are all shown there. I'll just clear that selection now. With Langston Harbour, we used all of this information and from the fieldwork that we carried out, along with historic maps and charts, to create a 4D model of the harbour. This blue star in the middle takes you to that 4D model. So if we just hover over that, you can view it within this smaller box or you can right click and open it in a new window. So if we just open this, this will take us to the website with the Langston Harbour 3D model. Just zoom into the region and then you can use these buttons along the top to choose a layer. The layers are the different periods. If we select Mesolithic first of all, you can then use your mouse to zoom in and out of the Mesolithic period and select different sites and features within it. So here we've got an occupation site uh, from the Mesolithic period and the results of the ranking as well. The submerged forest of Baker's Wythe and Russell's Lake is shown there. And then you can just change the period uh, a lot. We're using this drop down list and navigate around the landscape. Let's just go back to the Arkmont's Geo Portal for now. OK. You can also explore some of the other data available, for example, historic photographs. So if we just zoom back out to the full extent of the data, turn off the archaeological layer and turn on the photographic evidence. We can then zoom into another region. So if we zoom into the Bay de Lannion in Brittany, so all these green triangles represent the results of the ranking and the location of historic photographs. Just zoom in a bit further here. Again, you can use the select tool on the left there. You can hover over and get some basic information, the total score, or you can also click for more information and be linked to an external website where there's the original historic photograph is held. And you can just click on the square, on the triangle as well, and information will come up in your selection box. You can do the same thing for artistic evidence. So we just turn on artistic evidence here and turn off the photographs. 
and we'll just go and explore the East Anglia region. Works of art, uh, again the size and the colour of these squares reflect the ranking. In this case the ranking tells us how reliable the artwork is. Let's just zoom into this area here. So on this dot, for example, square even, you can click for more information and you're taken now to the BBC Your Paintings website. Or you can just hover over or click on the actual click on the actual dot and get the information here on the right. We'll just have a look at some of the historic maps and charts as well. If we just zoom back out and click on cartographic evidence. For historic maps and charts, the shapes show the area covered by the map and the colour reflects the results of the ranking. Again, this has been used to demonstrate how reliable a map is. See the technical report or guide for more information. In Belgium, historical maps have been used to reconstruct the post-medieval landscape. So we can click on these landscape reconstructions and have a look at the post-medieval landscape here. If we just zoom in to that study area, I'll just turn off the maps for now and zoom in here. We just maximise that. Now you can select the different periods and you can see these landscape reconstructions. So this one's from 1625, 1690, 1790 and so on. You can also see the pre-medieval landscape reconstructions. And again, the different periods are shown here and the legend shows you what the different colours represent. On a larger scale, we can also see this for the Southwest Netherlands. I'll just zoom out so you can see that up here. And we can move across. And again, we can maximise this and we can look at how it's changed over different time periods. The portal also has a query fu function on here. So select the layer to query. So if we just turn off these landscape reconstructions for now, zoom back to the full extent and turn on the archaeological evidence. We go to this query button here. You just need to tell this which layer you want to query. So we want to query all records from the archaeological and paleoenvironmental evidence. The property, so for example, if we wanted to look at querying the period, so we just need to select period in here. And then contains, for example, Bronze Age. Output property, if we output it as the site name, execute. So all Bronze Age sites will come up here. You could also use a spatial feature and just search in a particular area. We can then select that feature and information will come up on the right, which shows up here, and you can zoom to the feature as well. So there's lots of different, uh, different tools here that you can use to query the database. You can even change the base map as well if you wish. You just go to the external providers and you can select from the list here to change your base map. Now there's a lot to explore in this portal and not all functions are covered in this tutorial, but more information is available on the landing page and through the guide and technical report. We hope you find this useful and don't forget you can always just refresh your browser at any time and that original landing page will come up where it gives you a bit more information about the project, the partners, the data and the results and there's also a useful help and FAQ section. Thank you very much.